Oh, I'm having a lot of problems trying to go live as promised, but um, I'm going to still um, stick to what I, I said I would do. I'm really sorry for those of you that was expecting me to be on here um, on the 23rd. The 23rd was my birthday, as many of you knew or know. Um, so, and I thought, because it was a Sunday, I thought, let me you know, leave it for a few days um, and then and talk to you after it. But as many of you know, I've reached, reached the ripe old age of 55 55 and as you can see i've taken off the hair piece and the extensions and and i'm showing you the real me the gray the streak of gray going on there um showing you you know a bit of who i am um and, and i've been told not to knock it because gray the gray typifies maturity um stability and all of those things so i hope you like it this is me with with the head of hair, you don't know if you, many of you remember I cut it all off the other day, so I've gr I've grown it and it feels pretty good, you know it feels pretty good. I hope hope you like it. I do anyway. So it, 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 that's 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 the main thing. And and again, I want to thank those of you that took time to, you know, really make my day special. That day was really special, really really lovely, great day. Not much gifts naturally, but the the thoughts, the words, you know, words. Words are stronger. They are so much more stronger than something physical. If you tell somebody thank you or, or, or you know, I love you or, you, you know, how you're feeling, do you know that can mean a lot more than handing them a bag of money? Some of you say, no, I need the money. But I, I think, <laughs> you know, for me to have someone come and say, how you doing? And, you know, in, encourage you, it can be priceless and, and a lifeline. Um, and I've come here because, I, as I said to a few of you, that. Um, I wanted to remind those of us that have reached 50 and over, 50, 55 and over, 45, some of you feel a little old at 40, 45. Um, and I just want to say this, I, I remember in my 20s, you know, I got married at 21, 1985, I got married. And I remember my 20s being a really, a really, really sad time for me. 20, ripe old age, healthy but I was 20, I think 21 and married and having children. And it was a very, very sad memory, really sad memory. My 30s were sad as well. My 40s, in my 40s, it was a midlife crisis. And I was just, I was, um, I was looking for crutches, things to uh, keep me going. Shallow, empty, impulsive love. That's what I was looking for in my 40s. But coming back in my 50s, my 50s, I, and, and it sounds really strange, this has actually been the best, best time of my, my life. I'm 55, just gone. I've got three grown children. I'm a grandmother of one and one on the way. I'm so excited about that. But the main thing is I feel whole. I feel fulfilled. I feel, um, you know, complete. And it's not because I've got anyone in my life because I've been on my own for now, what, a good eight, nine, ten years. I mean, really on my own behaving and and I, I tell you what's behind that. And for those of you that don't know, it's been my faith. My faith has been um, the thing that has been my undergird, the thing that's kept me going, the things that's kept me blessed. That's what's kept me going. Um, and apart from that, I've kept myself busy. And there's some of you that are thinking 55. Oh, my God, 55. And you're, you're terrified of the number. And I can say 55 for me is just a number. It's it's a number because there are many that have not lived to see half my age. That's one reason. It's a number because, you know, I don't feel, apart from the backache and, you know, the look at it because I'm pins, um, I feel quite fulfilled. Um, and I just wanted to come in here just to remind those of us, especially the ones that are single, um, Especially the ones that feel single and, and have never been, you might say, Leslie, it's right for you, you've been married, you've tried married, you've been married, you've had children, so you've been there, done that. <clears throat> and to be honest, I wish I didn't, I didn't do it at the time I did, because when you do something beyond, uh, before the time, it can be, it can be, it can be quite devastating, you know, and, and you can start to think, well, oh my God, I'm 55 and I need to do this and, you know, it look bad if I don't have anyone, it, it'll look worse Trust me, it'll look worse if you get somebody that wasn't meant for you. <laughs> it will look worse. And I just want to encourage someone, you know, it's easy. As Winnie Tobinum said this, 
when you when you when somebody's belly's full and they're telling you to hold on and they've got the toothpick in their mouth telling you eat hold on hang on in there they just had a three course meal you don't really want to hear that from somebody who's got full belly you want you want to hear somebody hang on in there who's hungry like you and trust me i've been on my own and it's it it, it would be easier or it would it would be it's it's unfair and i'm not knocking those that are married because i love i just love trust me i love to see really good marriages but it would be unfair for somebody who's, as Bonita Bynum said, that's got someone around them and married and settled and telling me you're single to hang on in there. But so that's why I feel I need to be on it to tell you, listen, at 55, I'm asking myself, where, where do you go from here, Les? What do you do? What do you do? What, what are you fulfilled? What, what are you happy doing? Are you, are you distraught? Are you alone? Are you on the shelf? Do you think it's all over? Do you think that, no, you know, you're, you're going to be a washed up old hag? What, what, what's going on in your mind? What's going on in your mind? Because in my mind, I'm thinking, OK, I'm on my own. But it's not a disease. And in fact, for some people, it's a blessing. Because it, 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 being on my own, it's made me realise um, that I don't need someone in my life. Not because I'm women libs or I'm bitter against men or whatever. But it's made me realise um what do I really want? Who do I really want? Why do I really want them? What's the motive behind wanting someone or something? And so, you know, I'm in a place of real stability. Um, and I'm asking myself, what do you want to do? I, I, you know, there's one thing I used to do. I, I used to play the guitar and I'm picking that up again. You know, you know, though some of you out there, you, you, you can sing, you know, but you don't do it. And you don't, and some of us don't do certain things because, you know, I don't want to be seen to be copying anyone. Now, I was looking at this thing called the, 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 the you know, the, the, the Bible talks about the, 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 the seed, uh, uh, the, the talents. The danger of taking your talent and comparing it is that the impulse is to bury it. And there's no two DNA, I said before, and I say it again, there's no two DNA that is the same. And so it's so dangerous. Whatever you have, whatever you have, if you know you've got a tone and you want to try out a bit of singing, do it. If you think, you know, I can, I've got a bit of rhythm in my feet, do it. Try it. There's so much to do. And, you know, for me, the last 10 years, I've been busy. Um, I've been uh, volunteering. I've been working. I've done a bit of traveling. And I feel, I feel so fulfilled. And so I just come in here just to encourage those of you that think, you know, I just feel alone. I feel like I'm going to shut down. I don't like this being alone. You can be with someone. Trust me, you can be with someone and still feel like you're the loneliest person on the planet. And we've all been there. We've been with someone and they still don't understand us. And you still feel alone. And you're, they're still, in fact, I, sometimes I, I find it more of a challenge, especially if it's somebody that hasn't been sent or given to you as a gift it's a challenge because you're constantly thinking, will they stay? And, 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 and you, you always have to keep up and you're threatened and you're worried. And when you can find wholeness in yourself and, you know, you can stand and you can think, you know what, whatever is for me, it's got, it's got to find me. And that thing that finds me, that must become my option when it does find me. It must, mustn't be the thing that my whole, my whole life hangs on it if I don't get it. Because that's a very powerful position to be in, to be able to stand and not feel um, a spirit of neediness, a spirit of, um, uh, you know, I, you know I, I can't exist unless I get A, B or C, you know. And so I just felt like I wanted to remind someone, you're not finished. At 55, your life is not over. You know, there's things that you still can try. Um, and don't be forced or pushed into thinking, oh, my God, you know, I'm going to get old. And I'm not going to have anybody. <laughs> Trust me, that's not the answer. To, people think if I get my child, if I get my husband, if I get my if I can get, you know, to the top of my game, I'll be all right. There's people that have got all these things and they're still saying, what else? What else is there? You know, and so I felt the urge to encourage someone as a 55 year old single woman. Hang on, let me rephrase that. A 55 contented, blessed, favoured woman of purpose. I would encourage someone else to, you know, don't shut down. 
There's lots for you. There's lots for us. And, you know, let me know what you're doing. Let me know what you're about to do. Let's share and fuel off each other. Because our life isn't over. There's so much more going for us. There's so much more. And as I said to you, I'm at the best point, uh, best time of my life. And for anyone else out there that feels like it's, it's all over, it's not over. I remind, I'm reminding you. I'm reminding someone that it's not over. And so I just want to say a prayer with someone. Father, thank you for this opportunity to share my testimony with someone. Someone who feels alone. Someone who feels afraid. Someone who's worried. Someone who's depressed, someone who feels on the edge, I pray, Lord, that you'd minister to them, that the words that have been spoken today, it would resonate with them and that they'd be blessed and encouraged by this little word and this reminder. Thank you again for your goodness and thank you for your, your mercies. Commit the rest of the evening before you in Jesus' precious name and amen and amen. And that's my prayer to you today to just keep trusting him. This is what I've done. This is what I've, that's, this is what one of the main things that's worked for me, that I've put my trust in a God that has never failed me yet. Never failed me yet. And I owe everything. I'm going to say this. Some may not agree, but I'm going to say it anyway. The God that I'm serving, I found he's never failed me yet. And there's a song that we always, we, we, we used to sing and it's called, it says, closer than a brother. He's my dearest friend. He's everything I need. Jesus is my rock, my shield and hiding place closer than a brother. And so for those of you, especially that I've got a big selection of Christian friends around me, be encouraged because God hasn't forgotten and he knows exactly what you need. All right. God bless you. And thank you for your time. Thank you.